So, Dow moving up and up and up. That's why we're going commercial free, because we're up a 432 points high of the session, a gain of 502. Will we get back up there? So what is going on today? Could it be that last week's harrowing sell-off was sort of a one and done or a canary in the coal mine? To the floor show and our traders, they're all amassing around the nation. Uh, John Corpino, I'll start with you. One and done, or do you have a nagging suspicion the ugly stick might emerge again soon? I'm going to say one and done on a short-term basis. If you look back at our trading sessions over the past month or so, the same headlines that were out there two weeks ago, the same headlines were there last week, and they're here this week. It just seems like market overreacted to those headlines that are out there. We're talking about tariffs, China, interest rates, all these different things put together just kind of put the, put the market in a weird position. Sell-off came back uh, was last week. Volume supported this sell-off, which I did like to see. It wasn't just a fluke, but we saw the selling and we saw it hard. We knew after the selling was going to be done, on the calendar, earnings season was going to start. Historically, over time, earnings season buoys the market. Starting over with the financials, it clearly has helped us so far. Interesting, I want to see tomorrow morning or, or late tonight the composite volumes. Volume was very high last week. I'd really like to see the volume there today. And if that volume is there today, which I think it's going to be, uh, you know, just looking at the board now, I think this means that our rally is back on again. We're going to continue to move through earnings season. We're still going to have these same headlines that are out there, but the market historically rallies towards the end of the year, and I think we're going to see that in the fourth quarter. Look at that, Russell 2000. I mean, to see that big move, two and a third percent gain. Larry Shover, before I get to the one and done or a canary in a coal mine from last week, you have to tell me, you know, we looked at volume. I asked Charlie Brady to check the trading volume, which sometimes gives us an indication of how much conviction is behind a particular move. Last week, trading volume on the down days was about 30 to 36 percent higher than the one month average. Today, we're about 6% lower, 6 to 9% lower. So, not as much conviction going to the upside here, Larry. No, um, exactly. But let's also keep in mind that last week it was deleveraging. Uh, people, you know, the, the tech sector, the Uber tech names got sold. Then you had risk parity, CTAs, hedge funds. Um, systematically just selling with reckless abandon. So you're right. Today's volume is it doesn't look like a lot of conviction, but I think last week's volume was just computer generated, or people just had to get out. Well, who cares? And so maybe Com just undermining Com yeah. computer or not. Humans doesn't matter. Yeah. A retail investor at their TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab account. Who cares? There was more of it to the downside. Yeah. What does that tell you? Right. Yeah. Well, it tells me that it was just a, a deleveraging by largely professionals and that growth value chasm has been so wide for so long the minute something gives when people start selling these uber tech names the ones they've been buying for for any reason or no reason at all they're the first to sell and so we hit certain levels in the s p 500 and people or machines or whatever automatically just sell sell with it to create that momentum that we saw it, it lacked any kind of fundamentals and that's why i think it's one and done okay and, and liz uh, can i just answer that yeah, one please second? go ahead sure people panic sell in a very short period of time they don't panic buy uh, they buy right. over a period of time yep, and they yep, play catch yep. up so when you see the momentum like we saw last week the programs kick in the humans kick in the mentality is sell 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 on a day like today people aren't running to their computer saying i need to buy it oh phil what what must yeah. you think of something like what that point? i'd love your opinion <laughs> Well, it tells me right now that a lot of people right now are looking at us and saying, why did I sell that last week? What was I thinking? <laughs> exactly. That's what they're telling me. And, 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 and the people are like, you know, and, and, and we tried to warn them. You know, everybody on the air, I think, but most of us on the air were saying, calm down. You know, this is a correction. You know, we've had an incredible bull run, earnings around the corner. And we're probably going to head into one of the best earnings seasons, maybe in American history. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. I mean, this is just stellar. No, I, I really believe that. I think you're going to start seeing in these earnings the full impact of the Trump tax cuts. How could we I think not? You're seeing that, I totally agree with right. you. Yeah. See, see, the thing exactly. is, and, and we've said this constantly, it takes a year yeah. to 18 months for tax cuts to really show in the earnings and in people's spending habits. So, so I think you're right on that. And I just don't want to do a doubt yeah. check because we've got people listening on XM yeah. Sirius. Uh, 455 points to the upside for the Dow Jones Industrials. Go ahead, finish your thought, Phil. 
yeah, yeah. And the other thing I was going to say, when we, when we look at a lot of these companies, maybe not all the same sectors are going to leave. You know, you look at some of the sectors that didn't do well. For example, energy. <laughs> you know, in the next uh, quarter, that should really start to start to show some profit. Communications, of course, the new sector, right? You know, the Verizons, those kind of companies. You know, everybody looks to Netflix and those companies that were driving the stock market. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have the real economy driving this stock market. I don't market. know and if I we can pull up crude oil. Go. Crude uh, above 71. Mm -hmm. Brent, which is what trades overseas in London. It's more the international. Mm -hmm. Folks, it closed above $81 a barrel. That's not mm -hmm. so great for the consumer, but uh, there are a whole bunch of issues. Mm -hmm. What's going on in Saudi Arabia? Concerns about uh, who fills mm -hmm. the gap once uh, Iran oil is offline. We'll get to all of that in just a minute. Hey, guys, I want you to stay with me for a second because you and all of our floor show traders over the past years, uh, you could throw Charlie Gasparino into that, our producers on Team Countdown, and of course, all of you viewers need to hear this. You all helped make Countdown the highest rated business day broadcast in America last week during the worst sell off that we've seen in half a year. And when the chips were down, viewers turned to us here at Countdown and on Fox Business. So we want to thank, take this second right now with eight minutes after the top of the hour to thank our traders, our team, our loyal viewers for making Countdown number one. Guys, we are grateful to you. Thanks. Liz, thank you to you too for all you do. You, you've, you've made this an incredible program. Oh, John, thank you very much. Larry, you'll get nothing unlike it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Phil, Larry, thanks. We love it. Thank you. Okay, so it's easy to smile right now because the NASDAQ is up 180 points.